must be kept burning on the altar and the priest shall then put on his linen clothes with linen undergarment next to his body and shall remove the ashes of the burning of the burnt offering that the fire has consumed on the altar and the place and place them beside the altar then he takes off his clothing and put on other one and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremoniously clean. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It shall not go out. Every morning, the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offering on it 13 which is the subject of this sermon the fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously and it shall not stop burning Senior Apostle, uh, the fire lion is already laughing because she knows. And those who are in prayer line know that we say what? Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. This is our, um, this is our saying for the prayer altar and it is the saying for covenant lions keep the fire burning we know that this was moses 14 10 and he is talking about the tabernacle of god dealing with the atonement of sin for the children of God and of course to, for us today and the provision was for us to be able to have access to God just like one of our prayer points said that we have access to God and to have access to God the offering must be ready please turn to the neighbor to your left and say to them, the fire must be kept burning. The fire must be kept burning. Okay, turn to your other neighbor and tell them, keep the fire burning. Okay, now you are the most important part of all of this equation. Touch your head and say, I am the fire keeper. Hallelujah. I am the fire keeper. And for those of you who write, the title of this sermon is called Those Who Kept Holy Fire. Those Who Kept Holy Fire. Can we agree? Let's just, let's just agree that we know that ministry is messy. 
Yes, ministry is very messy. People are messy because that's what ministry is too. You know, preachers and, and, and women are men of God. We know when we deal with people. Can you agree with me that we know people are messy? Yes, we, we could agree that people are messy. And I'm sure if, you, if you've led any person, you know people are messy. And you also know that sometimes you could be messy too. And we often, you know, like I said in the prayer altar, we say keep the fire burning, keep the fire burning to encourage ourselves to charge up the fire because we already know who the sacrifice is. But we charge our energy by saying, keep the fire burning. But I, I, I submit to you, although we say it to charge our spirits, we are often very clueless what it truly means to keep the fire burning. But let me kind of bring us a little bit in because we know that in our modern society, when we deal with ministry, Ministry is work. It is hard work. It is not easy work. I'm sure the pastors and the, you know, the, the center leaders, all these people, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not by myself when I say this, that ministry is work. Although people, we see sometimes that it can be glamorous. You know, we see the television evangelists, you know, we see all of those people and we see the glam, you know, because some of them have made it, they could, you know, suit up a little bit. They could present themselves. They could look a little bit fancy. And we think that that's what ministry is. No. Because we see in Leviticus that the priest, these are priests, the ones who are doing the dirty job, the ones who are glamorous, but they're still doing the dirty job. Who would take the ashes? We all know ashes is not fancy. It's dark. It stains your clothes. But the priest who have now all of a sudden have given the word of God is the same priest. And those who work in the altar are also priests of God. Because you have to understand that the altar is the holy of holies. And the garment that God is talking about is a holy garment. Hmm. Holy garment. Even if the garment is to take out trash. Let me tell you that when you are chosen by God and truly called by God, God knows our heart. And why we come to minister. God knows our hearts and why we take on this baton known as men and women of God who lead a flock of people. It is not easy. It is not. But God knows our innocence and God knows our tricky mind. God knows our, you know, the tricks that we play that we think that people are not exposed to. But God still uses us. Jacob, God used the trickster known as Jacob for the seed to come out of Jacob that would liberate Israel from the captive and also liberate the world. My brothers and sisters, we should not fool ourselves because that same God who used the trickster also knew that the fire must be kept burning. So even while he was still being a trickster, God still used him. To be a trickster doesn't mean that God did not know that he was going to be Israel. The only thing is, are you aware that your heart is exposed to God? And sometimes when your heart is exposed that you think that is hidden in flesh, this body we call flesh, it is also exposed 
to those people that God give eye to see. But don't beat yourself down. Just count it all joy to be chosen by this mighty, mighty and dangerous God. God is very dangerous. Extremely dangerous. And what do you mean by God is dangerous? Because I know, you know, we, we often, some of us have allowed ourselves this image of this lovey dovey, you know, Jesus, this white Jesus that they painted and presented to us as Jesus, this blue eye, blonde hair, you know, timid looking, you know, no muscle, you know, Jesus. And some we know that it was painted by um, Leodano da Vinci because at that time he was commissioned to paint this image where the minds of the people is colonized. That you see this image and you look at it and you say that that is God and that is Jesus and you submit your will. But I submit to you that that is not Jesus and that looked nothing like Jesus. But he was successful in conquering our minds. In making sure that we submit to that which the people, the enemy, want us to submit. I say that God is a dangerous and terrible one. Don't be offended. I'm going to go to scripture and show you. Jeremiah 20, 11 says, but the Lord is like, but the Lord is with me like a mighty and terrible one. Therefore, my prosecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will greatly shame for they will not succeed. They eternally will be dishonored and never be remembered. This is Jeremiah 20, 11. When we say that God is a terrible one, we are using, he's using the metaphor of a warrior, a, a, a dreaded warrior. In Hebrew, it's called Arek, Arek. And it's talking about the inspiring God the terror striking God, the awesome God, the powerful God, the mighty God, the ruthless God. You have to agree with me when I say, when the enemy come against me, I'm not looking for this, you know, lovey dovey God. You know what I mean? I'm not looking for this, you know, this picture of who they painted. I need my God to be mighty and terrible because God has to handle the business that is against me. So when Jeremiah was talking about this, he was dealing with a dreadful God that will come and take care of business, take care of the enemy that is opposing you, that is opposing me. That is not a time for God to be like, oh, come to Jesus and let us dine together. Would you like some tea? No. He said that God is a man of war. And if you don't believe me, is Jesus, is God not the same God that said to Moses, no one will look me in the face and live? Or did we think that God was playing with Moses? Or that God was just needed God's ego to be buffed up? I beg you not. It was to save Moses' life because God is a terrible and mighty one. If Moses was able to see the face of God, the shock would break his heart into a trillion pieces. It would shed him so much that he would not be able to recover. So God said that I will hide myself on the rock cliff. That you will see my back. And I think I've shared with some of you one of the summons that God summoned me into the holies of holy. And I see the hand molding 
a human being in the spirit be before they become. This is when the Bible talk about God is a porter. It is real. And the hand is molding like a clay, like a porter would mold something. Molding a human being. And I see the eye of this human being. And I see the foot of the mother. That something was wrong with the foot of the mother. And I see the image of this human being that God was molding. And I kept trying to look at the face of God. You know, curiosity kills the cat. I kept trying to look at the face of Elohim. And Elohim kept turning. Every time I would come around, Elohim would turn. So I do not see the face of a this terrible and mighty one that will shock me to death because I still have purpose. You see, the Lord summoned me to see this human being that was being molded because I was a prophet to this bishop and he needed me to give a message to this bishop who I was. And when I went to the bishop and I said to him, is your daughter pregnant? And he said, no. And I said, okay. Less than two months after, the young lady comes on the pulpit to announce that she was pregnant. And not only was she pregnant, she was pregnant with a daughter. And I said, and she testified about God sending someone to see the daughter that she didn't even know she was to have. And when the daughter was born, the same description that the Lord showed in the spirit was exactly what that little girl looked like. It wasn't for my sake or for my ego. It was for him to understand when a message is coming, listen, because this is me. Yet, we refuse to understand that this God is a dangerous God and we should not play with God. The Bible says that the, big, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. In all our getting of wisdom, get understanding. Grace is not grace. Grace is cheap. Grace is not. But the priests these days were the ones who were doing the glamorous work. They were doing the sacred work. They were doing the dirty work. Not because of their glamorousness, but because they needed to serve the master, the Abba. Not because of what they could get. But because it was necessary for people to have access to God. So they needed to consecrate themselves so that the people would be able to come through and have easy access to God. But today, the dirty job is only meant for what? Ushers, janitors, those who we think that are less than us. And yet, the miniature work is left undone. The priest had to change his garment from one to the next to carry the ashes. And the garments were still holy. Because you have to understand that the holies of holy, nobody can really go in there at all. Nobody. One commentary talks about this garment, this linen garment, and I'm assuming is a white linen garment that was being changed. Because they understood that the presence of God was still there. One commentary says to us, in a memorable piece of act symbolism, Jeremiah pointed out that God had wanted to wear Israel like a, gar like a linen priestly garment to display God's glory. But by their idolatry, they became spoiled and unwearable. 
And this is Jeremiah 13, 1 to 11. A people of a compromised holiness have lost their proper position and mission in the world. Like Jeremiah's linen sasher, they have become completely useless to God because of idolatry. Okay. I still sense that some people are not convinced and they just think that I'm just bringing this out of my mind. We could go to Leviticus 10, 1 to 4. And he says, And Aaron's son, Nadab, and Abhum, took his scepter, put fire in it, and laid incense on it. And they offered an unholy fire before the Lord. And such he had not commanded them. And the fire came out from the presence of God and consumed them. And they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is what God meant when he says, through those who are near to me, I will show myself holy. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron the priest who have just lost his sons by fire was silent. A strange fire. A strange fire is that one that is not acceptable to God. It was a strange fire that consumed his brothers. But if you notice, Leviticus 5, I mean Leviticus 10, in verse 5, the Bible tells us that the fire did not even consume the body of these two brothers. Neither did the fire consume their clothing. Because if the fire had consumed their body and their clothing, it, the, the, it will, the smell will go everywhere. And it will be a sweet smelling servant to God. But God rejected that sacrifice. So it did not, the smell did not go out. It was a rejected offering. A strange offering that is being offered to God. Clearly rejected. Don't forget that the burnt offering is a free gift. Right? It's a free gift from God. And as long as it says, it says to the priest to keep the fire on the offering. So, and they keep in the fire on the offering. They bring in animals. They bring in, you know, not the dogs that are barking because, you know, God doesn't accept the those type of burnt offering, <laughs> you know, but the lamb, the sheep, you know, the goats, you know, all of this fat must continue to be on the altar of God. Today, because that's the only uh, acceptable offering a, a dog is not an acceptable offering to God if you if you know the, the spelling of dog I, I digress but the spelling of dog D-O-G backwards is God G-O-D and that's why they said that animal dog is man's best friend because of the characteristics of dogs so we hold dogs sacred. Refusing to accept the fundamental object, the fundamental subjectiveness of lore was that the fire in the altar must remain and it must never be extinguished. While Israel was encamped, the fire of God kept coming. It was started. And the fire of God that we are talking about is nothing but the presence of God. The presence of God. The Israel soon learned that the road to God through the burnt offering was always accessible and available. It is also thought to the value of a constant contact with God for atonement of sins. Christians. Apostle Paul reminds us in the New Testament that the same awareness in Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 5 to 19, it says, do not put out the Spirit's fire. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not put out God's fire. So you see that the Old Testament is talking about keep the fire burning. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, Apostle Paul tells us, do not put out the Spirit's fire. So in the New Testament, because we have now gotten the Holy Spirit, it is talking about the attribute of the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit of God. Do not quench the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. And we see that in Matthew 3, 11, we also see the significance of the Holy Spirit being this fire as Luke 3, 16, also Acts 2, 3, which a lot of us are familiar with when the apostles and the disciples were in the upper room and the fire of the Holy Spirit rested upon their head. And they were all on one accord, understanding each other's language. So don't be offended that we must keep the spirits burning, the fire burning. What is this fire in this 21st century? This fire that we are talking about is our prayer. The prayer is the sacrifice, is the word. The prayer is the word. That we must continue to pray because the fire will come from God to consume our burnt offering. That prayer must continue to go on over and over again. Because when prayer, prayer, not just any prayer, prayer that is scripturally based God does accept other prayers, but those are not the prayers according to scripture. It is the prayer of our hearts and our brokenness and our situation, our material life. And those are, and we get miracles from these things. But I bet you, and I will promise you that God have more for us than those prayers. Because the type of miracle that we are supposed to have is of the inheritance that is already given to us. The one that we get is nothing but for unbelievers. Miracles that really is for unbelievers. That is what miracle is for. It's for unbelievers. Us as sons and daughters of God have an inheritance. God doesn't need to show up and show out and, and dance and, and do all these things for us. No. Our God desire that we have true fellowship with the Lord. Know that God has to give us trickets for us to come and submit to God. So we must continue to be those who are on fire for God. And how do we do that? We need to continue to be sanctified. We have to self-deny ourselves. Bring our prayers to the altar. When we genuinely seek to be the friends of God, those who are on fire for God, you will seek God with all of your heart and soul despite what you think you will get from God. When you seek to be the friend of God, that God will appear to you in a burning bush without the bush being consumed up, you will then bow to God and bow your will to God. And our behavior will not be like those seven, 70 elders in Mount Sinai who are the invitation of God. God actually wanted to have a face-to-face, -face, not necessarily like see me by face, but a communion with God, a fellowship with God. But these 70 elders, they rejected God. And they said to Moses, no, we don't want to die. For the fire will consume us if we hear the voice of God. Our God no longer, we do not want to die when we hear and have this communion with God. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of fire as we have and remained alive? Go near yourself and hear all that God has to say and come and tell us and we will listen. 
This is um, Deuteronomy 5. 25 to 27. So we would have had, we would have been able to hear God as me and you hear God now. But our ancestor rejected it because it was too much. And they said, no, Moses, you go for us. Who has heard the voice of God like we heard God in the burning fire and live? We don't want that type of experience. We want the prophets and we want the seer and we want this and we want that. But we don't want to experience this because it is too much. When you seek to be the friend of God, you will willingly die and become a sacrifice. Become a sacrifice because you know that there is a lamb by the bush. That you could trust God. Melechi 3, 3. It says, And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. There was a group of people at an event. And after considerable deliberation of a committee, was formed to consult with a silverman, a silversmith, to understand this scripture about Melechi 3.3, that a refiner and a purifier of silver. And the silversmith swiftly that they went to consult to see exactly what the meaning of that scripture meant. And one said to him, sir, do you sit why the refining is going on? And he says, yes, indeed, I do sit why I'm refining this silver. I must sit and have my eyes fixed solely on the silver. For it is time necessary that it does not exceed the time that the silver must be in the fire in the slightest degree. The silver will surely damage if it goes above the degree and the time for it to be refined. Then they immediately recognize this scripture, Malachi 3.3, where it says, And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. But before they could leave, the silversmith calls back the group and says, one more thing. And I see, when I see my own photo mirrored on the silver, I know that the procedure is finished. You see, brothers and sisters, God wants to see the image of God reflect back onto the Lord. God wants to see the image of God reflect back in our lives. And when God did not see the shine reflect back in Adam and Eve in the garden, God sent out other saviors to the world. And many of them were killed because their image was not sugary image, neither was it itchy image, itchy M image that we like to hear. And when God gave the greatest gift that we know as Jesus Christ, the son, he too we killed. But you see, there is nothing wasted in the kingdom of God because he, the son, was always God's first plan, which is the burnt offering. God wanted to ensure that the offering continued to burn to eternity, that the fire never went out. So Jesus became that burnt offering that was at the altar, knowing that the fire would never go out. Because the other sacrifices that was at the altar, we became too tiring for us. And it became too much animals that were killed. And we refused to repent. We refused to change our mind. And God knew that if God continued to sacrifice animals, there would not be any more creature left because we are a sinful generation. 
And God needed to find a different way. And Jesus became that sacrifice. Because that sacrifice would never go out. But friends, Jesus still want us. God still want us to keep the fire burning. The fire burning in me. The fire burning in you. To refine us by the fire. He desperately desired to bless us. To bless this image that you and me carry around. So it will reflect back that the work of God was not done wasted. Friend, you are smart enough, but you're not Jesus. I'm not Jesus. So why don't we wait for the refiner to refine us and present us acceptable? Why not wait for the author and the finisher of our faith to complete the perfect work? A potter does not say to his maker, why are you making me? What is this strange fire that you are putting inside of me? I pray that we are not like those who have strange fires that is only meant to be thrown into a lake of fire. I pray that we become the church, the people, that the fire of the Holy Ghost rests upon us as it did in Acts 2-3. That it, it, it lit on them so well that in the 5th century, thousands of years ago, that the path of that fire still allow us to be able to see the path, that we are not left in darkness, that we see the path and into the 21st century. The fire that they led, that the Holy Spirit lit upon them in the 5th, the 3rd and 5th century is the light that we are still able to walk across to see for us to be on fire today. I pray that we are able to still be on fire, that the generations to come will see light and be able to walk on the path, the righteous path, the man of God, Pastor Robert told us, those who are righteous, that we are righteous enough that the path that we have, the fire that we have does not go out. That it is enough fire to lit the path. That the generations unborn are able to see the fire and be able to walk that path. I pray that we are such a one. That the duties that we have never go out. Do not quench the Holy Spirit, Paul says. And Paul tells in 2 Timothy 1 to 6, he says to Timothy, for this reason I remind you, to fan the flame, the flame, the gift of God. So that's another firewood is the gift, your gift. He said, fan the flame, which is the gift of God. So that's another firewood that must be kept going. The first one was prayer. The second one was our gift must continue to be on fire. And Apostle Paul tells Timothy to continue to find your gift of God. It is not your responsibility as preachers and ministers alone to keep the fire burning. But it is the responsibility of anyone professing to be Christian to keep the fire burning. Because we are all priests of the Most High God. 1 Peter 5, 2, 5 says to us, you also like a living stone are being built into a spiritual house to be holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifice. There go your third firewood. Spiritual sacrifice is your third firewood that is acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. So we have prayer as the firewood that we must keep burning because God has given us the fire from heaven, which is the presence of God. And we have our gift, which is another firewood that must constantly, the sacrifice that must constantly be at the altar because God has given us that free gift known as the fire, which is the presence of God. When we see the fire, we know that the presence of God is upon us. And Apostle Paul continued to help us and he tells us that the spiritual sacrifice, they go another firewood that must be at the altar 
and the fire must consume it. And of course, praise and worship is another fire that must be kept going because then the presence of God comes and consumes it. Even John the Revelators help us. He says, to him who loves us and freed us from our own sin by the blood, made us to be a kingdom, a priest, serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever again. Revelation 1.5. So we are all priests to the Most High God when we are righteous. And we all must keep the fire burning. It's not just left for the preachers or the ministers or the evangelists. It's left onto every professing Christian to keep the fire burning. Brothers and sisters, as I close, why don't we pledge ourselves today? As Pastor Robert has already said earlier that he pledged his people and himself. He pledged allegiance to God that he will keep the fire burning on covenant lions. Once again today, we pledge our allegiance to Christ Jesus. When we come to covenant lion, that's who we pledge in our allegiance to. We're not pledging allegiance to men or women or anybody else. We are pledging our allegiance to our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm not deterred by numbers. I do not care about numbers. What I care about is the souls of people who do show up, who know who they serve, who know why they come, whose joy is filled in being in the presence of God and getting the word of God. So I I invite you to pledge allegiance to King of King and Lord of Lord. Because he, Elohim, is worthy. Our Abba is worthy. To remove every strange fire. Strange fire about our situations in life. Because the strange fires, can our fire can get dimmed by life's events by disobedience, by doubt, by discouragement, by murmuring. Our fire can go down, but allow the Lord to remove those strange fires. I said it earlier before we even started, like I'm telling you this fast is drawing out so much that is inside of us. Those strange fires, those pet demons, that we carry around is drawing it all out. Allow the refiner to draw it all out. But position yourself that once it's finished drawing out all those pet demons that we carry around, those characters that we carry around that we think it is us, it is not you. Allow the refiner to draw them out. Because once the refiner draw them out, the Holy Spirit says, then I'm able to put all this goodness that I have for you, the inheritance that belong to sons and daughter of God. Allow the refiner to draw out. That is our allegiance today, to allow the refiner to draw out all every strange fire In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you do not know God, I will definitely give you the invitation now to please come to Jesus. Come to the author and finisher of our faith. All you have to say is, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Not worthy of this sacrifice, but I know that you died at the cross of Calvary for me. To pay the price for my sins. I admit I am a sinner and I need a savior and I accept you as my Lord and my savior. Sanctify me and make me whole in the name of Jesus. If you've said this, I beg of you, 
go to your center leader, go to your pastor and ask them that you will want to be baptized in the name of our Father, our Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I say, welcome to the family of God in Jesus' name. Please get your communion ready. If you have not been taking communion when you break your fast, I beg of you, do take the communion while you break the fast. But get your communion ready. I'm going to give you just a few minutes to get your communion ready. Then we will take our communion very shortly. Then we will be dismissed in the name of Jesus. So please get your communion ready. Do not go anywhere. Please, please don't go anywhere. Just get your communion ready. We are wrapping up. And we are trying to get on time. And we will pledge our allegiance to the Lamb with all of our soul and all of our hearts in the name of Jesus. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And today, the second, starting the second, we are the second day of our second week of our 21 day fast. Lord Jehovah Adonai, we pledge once again our allegiance to you. The only pledge and the only allegiance that is worthy is to your name to glorify you lord jehovah adonai you've heard all of our prayer the supplications of those prayers that we do not even altered out loud holy spirits of the living god i am that i am blessed lord jesus break us mold us fill us with your presence in your glory lord jesus use us because you are the potter as we take this communion, Holy Spirit, use us, uproot every strange fire, every strange fire that you might take dominion and power in us. Uproot everything that needs to be uprooted. Uproot it all, Lord Jesus. We submit fully unto you that as we take this communion, that you are fully in charge of our lives from inside. Lord Jesus, we forget the old things. We become new in you. Holy Spirit, take control. Heal us where we need healing. Empower us where we need empowerment. Enrich us when we need riches, Lord. But most of all, do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Let your fire so dwell in us, Lord Almighty, that we set a path, Lord, for those in darkness to see the light because your presence remain with us in covenant lines. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your people. I thank you for your people. I bless your holy name for your people. We are not a perfect people, but we are being refined by the silversmith that is you. Refine us, Lord Jesus, that we reflect back your image in our lives and who we are. Take all the glory and the power Take every glory and power of our life, Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Take up the flesh of God. Flesh of Jesus. You can take up the flesh of Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for putting us in, we put you in remembrance. We put you in remembrance. We put your holy name in remembrance. That our sacrifices is not in vain. That we are granted, we are granted access to you. That our sacrifice is not in vain. That our offering is acceptable unto you. We take this blood transfusion that is Jesus Christ as we become one with Christ. Please take up the blood of Jesus.
in Jesus name ah oh, in the name of Jesus Captain Glory oh. thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Give him all the glory for how he has brought us this far. And we believe that he will still continue to be with us till the end. The song I'm going to sing is a sort of encouragement to every one of us. That he knows the good plans and thoughts that he thinks towards us. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. And this is how it goes. For I know the plans I have for you. He says, I know just what you're going through. Yes. So when you can't see what tomorrow holds or yesterday is true, remember, I know the plans I have for you he says i know the plans i have for you and you and you and you he says i know i know just what you're going through oh yes i do so when you can't see what tomorrow holds or yesterday is true remember I know the plans I have for you. He says, oh, to give you hope for tomorrow, joy for your sorrows, strength for everything you go through. He said, I'll give you hope for tomorrow, joy for your sorrows, strength for everything you go through. He said, I'm going to give you hope for tomorrow, joy for your sorrows, strength for everything you go through. Remember, I know the plans I have. He says, I know, I know the plans I have, I have for you. He's got a plan. He is making a way. He is making a way for somebody right now. I say my God is making a way. So when you can't see what tomorrow holds, or yesterday is true, remember, I know the plans I have for you. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. He says that his ways is higher than our ways. He says his thoughts is higher than our thoughts. I know the plans I have for you. He is making a way. He is making a way. He is making a way for somebody right now. I said, Jesus is making a way. So when you can't see what tomorrow holds and yesterday is true, remember, I know the plans I have for you. Our God is able to do just what he says he will do. He is going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't you give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He is able. Our God is able to do just what he says he will do. He is going to fulfill every promise to you, yeah. Please don't you give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He is able. I say our God is able. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never 
go back anymore when i remember what the lord has done i will never go back anymore so many things i know has happened in our lives that we should never go back anymore so many discouragement has come to our minds i say don't you ever go back anymore as for me when i remember what the lord has done i will never go back anymore when i remember his goodness in my life i will never go back anymore what shall separate you from the love of god I think enjoying this fellowship is one of the best is one of the best thing that has ever happened in my life. The fellowship of the of the brethren. The fellowship of the brethren. Like any time I'm not opportune to come to CLF fellowship. I know how I feel personally on my own. Don't look at anybody. Don't allow anybody to discourage you. I want you to hold firm and stand firm for God and live that life you can to please him and live up to his expectation. He will never cut off our expectations. Your, none of your expectations shall be cut off. I want you to believe that in your heart. He has good thoughts and plans towards you. His thoughts for us are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. And I know he will bring it to pass in this fasting and prayer. He is going to fulfill all our promises, all our secret prayers. He's going to answer them all. I know God will answer us. God will answer us. Please just go with this might. Just go with this might and be ye focused. Be ye focused because our God will come very soon. He shall come to judge the living and the dead. Let us be focused. Don't let anything shift you from the faith. Don't let anything shift you. What shall separate you from the love of Christ? Live to him. Continue to fellowship with him. And he will surely see us through. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. <laughs> uh, most high God, I thank you because of you are. Thank you for your, say, your love, your compassion. Thank you to waking and to instruct. Thank you, Father God, for your daughters you've used to give us prayer points and we have prayed in one accord. Thank you, Father God, because I know that as we have depended and relied on thee and have called on thee, you, God of our Father and Savior Christ Jesus, you have heard us. Thank you, Father God, because the words that have gone out of our lips you have heard, and I know more than that you will do. I commit your people into your hand as we all go back to our various homes and destinations. Johnny Mel says, let it be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. My Father and my God, I beg, Lord God of heaven, that the words we have heard, the birds of the hour will not pick them out of our hearts. The cares of this life will not shook them away. And it will not fall by the wayside, but as we get home, help us to meditate on it so that we will give ourselves fully unto it and profit from it in the name of Jesus. Amen. My Father and my God, I pray, Lord, as we have prayed for expansion, as we have prayed for favor, as we have prayed for renewal, as we have prayed to walk with you, I pray more than that, you will answer and you alone will take all the glory. And in CLF, you will take all the glory. Be with us, dwell with us with your holy fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, Chief Apostle Dr. Enke, I commit into your hand more of your wisdom, more of your grace, more of your support. Let it be given unto her as she call on thee, Heavenly Father. I pray you hear in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every chief apostle, senior apostle, every leader, archbishop, every bishop, every center leader, every brethren in CLF, my Lord and my God. I commit everyone into your hand. I pray that your hands will be your partners, Earl, to turn in our hearts to you and you alone. 
will be glorified and I pray you will manifest yourself in our various in the various areas of our life and whatsoever be the challenges in our lives that we might not be able to tell it to man as we tell it to you at home as we tell it to you by the desires of our heart I know you will hear because your word says that you are the one that heareth us and answereth us even more than that that we ask of thee O oh Lord that we ask that we think O oh Lord, that we want you to do, even as we meditate on those needs, hear your people, make them at the point of their needs to the glory of your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that as the people are saying there is a casting down, your people will say there is a lifting up because you are the God to whom they have lifted up their soul, their eyes and their spirit, too. and I know you shall never put them to shame. Thank you, Father, for answer to prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Chief Apostle Dr. Enke, I turn it over to you. Amen. Amen. I think you have closed us. Um, that that is. <laughs> we are closed in the name of Jesus. Please, I I will continue to encourage each and every one of us to stay strong in the Lord. We will finish well. We will finish well. We will finish well in this fast. Like I said, if you are if you haven't jumped on, jump on the fast. It is not too late. It is not too late. Jump on the fast. Come to fellowship with your brothers and sister. Come where we have, you know, a good, good banquet with the Lord. Come praise and worship. Come to prayer that we have every day. So please, by any means, find a way. If you cannot come to those places, do not be isolated. Find a brethren, a sister, and pray with them and break bread with them in this fast in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all is well with your soul. As you leave the presence of your brethren, may the Holy Spirit go with you. May the presence of the Lord continue to hoover and protect you in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ no. we'll linger a little bit behind just in case you have a question or two Hello. <laughs> just in case you have one one um question or two um chief apostle philip is here myself i'm here i see captain glory is also here for us to you know, ask, uh, answer any questions that you have in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we are officially closed. Shalom to you and yours. Until we meet again, shalom. Subscribe. I only do this for you. And turn on your notifications. Let's go. I want more of you, Lord. See, I